Erev Tov. I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. Uh, according to the Telegraph in their Middle Eastern report, an article by Richard Spencer uh, <clears throat> says Iran is taking over Iraq, and Obama must put boots on the ground against ISIL, warns Saudi Arabia. Prince there warns them. Now, before I go into some of the article here, let me just uh, bring some thoughts up to your mind and, and, and what's being said here. We've also had private confirmation from inside the military that <clears throat> that the U.S. is already planning on sending troops. They are, there are troops uh, on high alert for deployment to the Middle East. Some people believe that's for the sake of Israel. And, of course, naturally in the, in the uh, outcome in or, or the interim, it is definitely going to be for the protection of Israel. Uh, but it's also been very obvious to us, as we've reported over the last uh, month or so here, how Iran's influence has been everywhere. It's been in Lebanon with Hezbollah. It's been with Syria. We already, of course, we already know that it's with Syria. <clears throat> Russia is, an, uh, is a great ally of Iran, has increased military ties with them. They've also released new types of missiles and capabilities that they have. And they are very much actively preparing for a war against the United States, including uh, developing their own cruise missiles from, of course, the Russian S-200 cruise missile in order to sink uh, American aircraft carriers. Um, and they know that this is a big issue that they have to, to deal with, and this is one reason why it seems quite obvious that Iran wants to also take over Iraq. And, of course, they were part of the coalition in, in fighting ISIS in Iraq as well. Uh, since the coalition allowed recently, they, the U.S. allowed um, uh, Iranian warplanes to do one of the bombing campaigns there. So it's just kind of getting very interesting to say the least, and not to mention Yemen. The Saudi-backed president of Yemen was overthrown by the uh, Iranian militants there. And, uh, and, and even more seriously that we're finding out from uh, the article written by Richard Spencer here is that Two of the main leaders of the of the uh, or the masterminds, at least according to the public public publicity photographs, pro Baghdad sources have released. One is Hadi Al Amari, the leader of the powerful Badar organization and Shia militia close to Iran. The other is Qassam uh, Soleimani, leader of the Iranian Al Quds force, the overseas operations arm of the Revolutionary Guard. And these are the men that are east of the city of Tikrit that have been organizing the, the attack there. And uh, so it's very interesting to see that the, uh, you're basically looking at a Shia versus Sunni Muslim fight and battle in the Middle East here. And, of course, the Iranians are Shiites. They are not loyal to the Vatican as the Sunnis are. The Sunnis are more loyal to the Vatican's desire and the U.S., when they came into uh, the Middle East to begin with to, to liberate Kuwait, they were fighting against the Shiite-led uh, government there in Iraq. And, um, but things are just really crumbling apart at this point here, and Iran is certainly preparing for a battle with the United States. They have Russia to back them as well, and, uh, but it seems to be that Russia is going to allow uh, the Iranians and their military to do all the fighting up front. Uh, but they definitely are giving them the military hardware to do so. And, of course, uh, it seems quite obvious that they're going to try to distract the United States by attacking Israel with Hezbollah and even from the Syrian border as well. Um, and, of course, they've, gotten, they've taken over Yemen, which also would control the Gulf of Aqaba, which would make it harder for Israelis, Israel's military to move in and out of the Gulf of Aqaba if... Iran has control of Yemen. Now, the Saudi prince has noted that this has become a very serious situation. And so let me read to you a little bit of the article here by Richard Spencer. He says, Saudi Arabia became the second key American ally in the Middle East to demand President Barack Obama change tack uh, towards Iran on Thursday as it called for U.S.-led coalition boots on the ground to fight ISIL. Um, he says here that uh, Prince Saudi al uh Fasal, the Saudi foreign minister, told John Kerry, the U.S. Secretary of State, that he risked allowing Iran to take over Iraq, echoing Israel's recent concerns over the White House policy towards Tehran. The United States and its coalition allies are attacking Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, 
uh, ISIL is in parentheses, position from the air, both Syria and Iraq, but refusing to send troops. As a result, outside Kurdish areas, the offensive in both countries is heavily influenced by Iran and its proxy Shia militants, such as Hezbollah. This has raised serious concerns in Saudi Arabia, Iran's uh, Sunni rival for Middle East dominance. The Iraqi government is currently attacking uh, ISIS positions in Tikrit, uh, Saddam Hussein's hometown north of Baghdad, but most of its forces are under the command of government-aligned Shia militias, whose leaders are close to the Iranian regime, even though the population of Tikrit is largely Sunni. So as you can see, it's definitely getting pretty crazy there, and obviously the United States, if they're going to send troops in, will do so in order to protect the gas fields that they worked so hard to get, get in the first place. And of course, uh, their one ally, Saudi Arabia, is also important to protect them, otherwise the world's gas supply and oil supply will be cut off from the United States, which would be detrimental to the economic stability of the world. I'm Stephen Benoon reporting Israeli News Live. Shalom.